This is a tutorial on how to make an unencrypted DCP with DaVinci Resolve Studio. The DCP creation option is available with only the paid studio version of DaVinci Resolve. At the CDA, this version is installed in the color correction suite, AV Suite 0 and AV5810. As you will see with all the organizations and committees who have a stake in determining the standards of digital movie distribution, the process of making a DCP becomes somewhat bureaucratic. Most importantly, however, it is cheap to make one. Before I start, I'll quickly define a DCP, or Digital Cinema Package. This information is important for how to prepare your video for DCP creation. First, it's called a package because it's a folder containing multiple files. Sound and image are in separate MXF files. A DCP can have one of three possible aspect ratios, full, flat, and scope. Here are the resolutions in 2K and 4K. The flat aspect ratio is most similar to the 16 by 9 aspect ratio of HD or 4K UHD video. DCP frame rates are not the same as NTSC frame rates. They are true 24 frames per second rather than 23.976 frames per second or true 30 frames per second rather than 2997 frames per second. 24 frames per second was the original frame rate for DCPs, but other frame rates are now possible. For 2K and 4K SMPT standard DCPs, the frame rate may be 24, 25, or 30 frames per second. And 2K SMPT standard DCPs can also be 48, 50, or 60 frames per second. For the older standard inter-op DCPs, the frame rate should be 24. The SMPT standard has been in place since 2009, and this is the standard that I recommend using. In this tutorial, I am starting with a ProRes file exported from my editing software. Which version of ProRes you export depends on the quality of your source files. Export a ProRes 444XQ file from your software if the sourced files are 12-bit RAW or some other 12-bit log format. The MXF image file in a DCP is a 12-bit image sequence, so it will preserve that color information. If your source files are 422 10-bit, you can simply export a ProRes 422HQ file. DCPs use the DCI-P3 color gamut. Color correct in this gamut to take advantage of all the possible range of colors. However, you can grade using the broadcast video REC 709 color gamut, and the colors will be mapped correctly to DCI-P3. Once the DCP is created, the color of the individual images in the MXF image file will look incorrect on your computer because they have been converted to another color space, the XYZ color space. Don't worry, they will appear correctly during the projection. Audio should be mixed down to an interleaved 24-bit 48 kilohertz WAV file. Surround sound is the norm, usually 5.1 or 7.1, but DCP supports up to 16 channels. Surround audio must be exported in the SMPT order. The target loudness level for cinema mixes is minus 24 LUFs, but I have found that mixing a bit quieter around minus 27 LUFs is preferable. It is not recommended to make a stereo DCP. A stereo soundtrack can sound fine in a small venue, for example like the Decev Cinema in Concordia's library building, but in a larger theater with a wider screen, the lack of sound coming from the center speaker will be noticeable. It's important to have a surround sound mix, even if that mix does not use the side or rear speakers. The important thing is that the dialogue is coming primarily from the center speaker. Some effects will be placed in the center as well. Your DCP should be verified and checked before sending it to a theater. You can do this by using the Easy DCP Player Plus software 
in the VCR Mini Cinema on the EV third floor. The contact information is below this video. DCPs do not have to be encrypted. If they are encrypted, only a cinema with the proper KDM key delivery message can play it back. If you are concerned about the possibility of your video being pirated, you should use another DCP creation option. Your project may already be in Resolve, but in this tutorial I will explain Resolve from the beginning for those of you who are not familiar with the software. At any time you can go to the Resolve 18 manual, page 3906, to see information specific to DCP exporting. The manual is in the Applications folder next to the application. Start out by opening DaVinci Resolve. If you've never opened the application before, you can do the quick setup. You can change the resolution once a new project is created, so don't worry about which option you select here. By default, the media will be stored in your user account movies folder. Remember that on CDA AV Suite computers, this user folder is deleted every week on Friday morning. I'm using the DaVinci Resolve keyboard shortcuts in this tutorial. Once Resolve opens, make a new project. Click on the house icon in the bottom right of the window to see existing projects and to make a new project. Then go to the project settings, the wheel icon, master settings, timeline resolution. Set the timeline resolution and frame rate. In this case, I'm creating a 2K full ECP at 24 frames per second. This is the resolution and the frame rate the ProRes file that I am importing into Resolve. You don't have to be concerned with any other settings here for the purpose of exporting a DCP. Go to the media window that should be open by default to import the file. Right click on the media pool window and go to import media. If I click on the imported file in the media pool, I can then see the specifications in the metadata window. This is a 2K full ProRes file at 24 frames per second with six channels of audio. Right click on the clip and create a timeline using the clip. In the Create New Timeline settings, I'm making sure to create a 5.1 audio track. 5.1 means SMPTE order. Do not select the 5.1 film option. Double click on the timeline icon to open up the edit window. In your timeline, the video should start with two seconds of black. There is no countdown leader and no color bars on a DCP. A DCP must start and end on black. I'm going to check the playback of the audio. If you don't see these two audio channels on the right side, and go up to the mixer button and turn that on. You can see from the playback that the audio track is 5.1, but the bus track is stereo. This needs to change. I go to the top menu, Fairlight, Bus Format, and change it to a 5.1 bus. Now you can see that the track and the bus output are both surround sound 5.1. Now go to the deliver page. You are doing a custom export. The file name is the name of the film and then set a location for the file to be saved. Under Video Format, choose DCP. Use the Kaduku JPEG 2000 codec. Choose the Resolution and Aspect Ratio. 
This is a 2K full PCP. HDR. I'm not sure how HDR video is actually interpreted in a theater on a projection system. In this case, this DCP does not have any HDR material. HDR does not mean that you shot your video with a cinema camera using log or raw video formats. It refers to HDR displays that are capable of showing extra levels of brightness. Deselect use interop packaging. This is an earlier standard of DCP delivery. Theaters have had since 2009 to get on board with the SMPTE standard, so unless the venue has requested an interop DCP, deselect this option. The resolution and frame rate is selected for you. For maximum bit rate, 250 megabits per second is the maximum bit rate for 2K and 4K 2D DCPs. As a precaution, I back off the bit rate a little to make sure that the maximum bit rate is not exceeded. Here I am leaving the slope rate control disabled and the quality at automatic. You can read more about these options in the Resolve Manual if you care to alter the details of the JPEG 2000 compression. I'm skipping over the advanced settings and going to the essential composition settings. This is where the name of the DCP is generated according to the DCNC, Digital Cinema Naming Convention. The name will be long and cryptic and contains important information about the content of the package. Click the Edit button to bring up the name generator. Enter the title of the movie. Indicate new words in the title with initial caps. Don't put a space or an underscore. The content type is entered later. Under Content Modifiers, Temp and Pre indicate that it is an unfinished version of the movie. Red band is for trailers. Chain is for a movie release uh, that is for a specific theater chain, like Cineplex, for example. I cannot get any information on what this mastered luminance value is, uh, and unfortunately, Concordia does not have a subscription to the database that holds the SMPTE documents. I am entering 2D. This is not a 3D film for people wearing 3D glasses. Frame rate is 24 frames per second. It does not use Dolby Vision or Eclair color. The aspect ratio is already recognized. Enter the audio language. If there are subtitles, you can select the language of those. You can also specify whether there are any open or closed captions, OCAP or CCAP. This is the territory where the video is being created. If the video has been rated by a provincial sensor board, you can enter that rating here. You cannot rate your own film. Under Canadian law, film classification is a matter falling under provincial jurisdiction. In Quebec, for example, you have to submit your film to the Ministry of Culture and Communications. You can enter the audio type. HI, VI, and SL refer to whether the audio track has supplemental assisted listening, description, or sign language tracks. The resolution of this movie is 2K full. There is no studio associated with this movie. It's an independent. I'm including the date on the DCP title. This DCP is not being generated by a large established DCP making facility. This is a SMPTE standard DCP. It is not an IOP interop DCP. The package type is OV, original version. The OV always contains the entire package, the entire movie. Checking OV indicates that the DCP is complete. It does not depend on any other files. VF is a version file, partial package that depends on an OV package to be complete. 
Give your name or the name of your movie company as the issuer. Content indicates whether it is a feature, a short, an advertisement, etc. Generally, you will want to encode the DCP as a single reel. Splitting the movie up into multiple reels is only convenient if you want to replace one reel later without recreating the entire DCP, but this seems unlikely. The subtitle settings here would be relevant if I had subtitles created on the Resolve timeline. There are two ways to have subtitles on a DCP. They can be burned into the image, and I think this is the best approach since then you have total control over how they look. The other option is to include subtitles as text information in an XML file in the DCP package. This then relies on the projection system in the theater to create the subtitles as the movie is playing. Then check the audio output. My settings are linear PCM, which means uncompressed audio. Sample rate is 48 kilohertz. The configuration is 5.1. The bit depth is 24. And I am using bus one, the 5.1 output as the source. Now that all these bureaucratic decisions have been made, I can finally add the timeline to the render queue. Then I start the render in the render queue. You'll notice that the color looks weird. Once again, this is because you are seeing the software shift the color to the XYZ color space. Don't worry because the image will look correct when you project it. Here's the finished DCP. You can send the entire folder to the cinema. Here's the audio folder, and here's the video folder. Check with the cinema about how they would like the DCP delivered. You may be able to send the DCP by file transfer, or you may have to ship it physically to the location. If that is the case, ask the cinema what drive formats they accept. Some DCP servers accept XFAT, and others only accept Linux formatted drives. You can format a drive XFAT with disk utility on any Mac computer. But if you require a Linux formatted drive, CDA has this formatting software in AV Suite Zero. Go to the application EXTFS for Mac. Erase the drive that you want to use and use the file system EXT2 or 3. Any cheap USB 3 drive can transfer the DCP. SSD drives are better, and you can also use a USB key or flash drive, but only if they are the really good ones that have a data transfer rate of at least 95 megabytes per second. Don't forget to check the DCP with the Easy DCP Player Plus software in the VCR Mini Cinema. This is a 7.1 surround cinema. The projector has been color calibrated, but it does not cover the full DCI P3 color space, and it is an HD projector, so you will see some pillar bars or letterboxing on your content depending on the aspect ratio. Thank you for watching this tutorial, and I wish you the best of luck in your DCP creation.